This is the shakedown video on the E-Flight Viper 90 millimeter. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a near disaster. I double assigned channel functions to one switch and almost lost the plane. In the video, I really didn't even know what had happened. It kind of freaked me out, so I just flipped the gear and landed it. It's near the end of the first flight. Having a great time ripping it. And I went to do my safe demonstration where I was upside down and I flipped the switch. And it righted the plane like it's supposed to, but it also slammed on the brakes and put reverse in. And I was very, very fortunate to recover. I feel like there's a tremendous learning opportunity for all of us in this video. And that's why I brought on my friend RC Air Marshal to do a tutorial on how to set up safe and thrust reversing, how and why to do it properly. I think I showed you the why, so you don't crash it. I will put chapters in this video so you can easily refer to those sections. So thanks Air Marshal for coming on board. Do this collab with me. Bobby K, as always, on the camera, I appreciate you. You wanna see a flight that doesn't have problems, the second flight is already posted. I will put it in the end screen, the info card, and a link in the description to it as well. Of course, you can always find the product, tech spec information in the description as well through my affiliate link. I appreciate that when you guys use those. Enjoy the video. Don't let this happen to you. And I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back to Pilot Ryan Media. This is Pilot Ryan and Bobby K. We have the brand new hot ticket. Get it with the dialed in. E-Flight 90 millimeter Viper. This follows up the venerable E-Flight 70 millimeter Viper, which was the first jet that I know of that had the safe technology. Now everything has it, this has it too, and you can also set up thrust reversing. I've got it set up, we're chasing down the sun, but more videos to come on this. Super pumped, this thing looks amazing. Let's take it up in the air. Book rates, I'm going high right now, let's go. I'm gonna drop the flaps right now. So we gotta slow past the lights on this thing. I know, it's gorgeous. Full flap regalia. Set up flap Flaps elevated. Just slow past presentation. jet that I know of. Sign of wearing out. Oh my word! Just come out of it. It's spin. 5,050C. This thing is sick. Looks like it. Looks like it. Tell 
So they're low rate 70%. I'm gonna see what that's like. But I like the 100, and I set up a mid at 85, but this is their 70. I've been flying on 100%. Super Kush. Yeah, it looks like it, man. It's awesome. 36 seconds left. Let's give them. I'm being bold. Let's go. Brass. Right. and go. I think I got the time. the guys flaps full <laughs> flip the wrong switch that was the gear switch I'll do it again it's just fun to see safe do its thing right so we're upside down <laughs> good save dude Good save, dude. Good save. All right, gear coming down. That was going to be farther than I wanted it. Yep. On the approach. Getting that signal for the battery. Definitely over time. And we've been ripping it up. What a maiden flight, dude. Dude. Yeah. This thing is a doll. Who's dead sticking? Oh, 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 yeah. And this is where you hit the brakes. Yes. But I haven't figured that out yet. Oh, my goodness. Critical. Critical. You're going too fast, bro. Critical. Main flight in the books? Yeah, I was hard on it. Whoa. Yeah. Woo! This is the time where we're gonna give it to RC Air Marshal to show us in an expert fashion how to set up safe select and thrust reversing. We're gonna talk about my mistake, how to avoid it. I wanna own this mistake and I wanna also offer a solution. So guys, enjoy the part with Dave. I hope you get something out of it. Links in the description to his channel. Hey, thanks, Ryan. What's up, guys? This is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel. You guys remember this. Good save, dude. Man, that Viper was about one second from becoming a lawn dart. I gotta give it to Ryan though, that was a great save. Ryan made a few mistakes that almost cost him his new E-Flight 90mm Viper. What Ryan did was assign the reverse function of the Viper's Avian ESC to the same channel he had assigned to the safe select mode on the AR637TA receiver. So when he engaged the safe mode, he was also reversing the thrust of the EDF, causing the plane to lose forward momentum, stall the wings, and fall out of the sky. When Ryan was setting up the safe select feature on the Viper, he used the safe disabled binding method and used forward programming to assign safe select. 
There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, and it's actually my preferred method of setting up safe select on new bind and fly aircraft as well. Then he used his next available channel, in this case channel 7 or AUX2 for safe select. Still no mistakes being made yet. When Ryan was ready to set up thrust reversing, rather than calling me like he has a hundred times before, he used a tutorial on YouTube on how to set up thrust reversing for the all new E-Flight F-16. And this is where things went wrong. Three factors came into play that I can think of. Number one, the F-16 does not have flaps. So the safe select switch could be assigned to channel six where the flaps would normally go or AUX1. Because the safe select switch was assigned to AUX1, the tutorial for the F-16 used channel seven or AUX2 for the thrust reversing channel. What compounds this issue is that the default channel in your Avian ESC is going to be channel seven for thrust reversing. And a possible fourth factor is that in the Avian ESC programming, the reverse channels are referenced by the channel numbers rather than the channel names, and we're limited to only being able to use channels five through nine in the Avian ESC. So as we can see, there were several factors that could have led to Ryan making this honest mistake. So how do we avoid that from happening for you? The first thing that I have to mention is that if you're gonna follow a guide that's for a specific airplane, be that a forum post, a YouTube tutorial, someone's blog, whatever the case may be, make sure it's for the airplane that you're working on. Not every airplane is set up the same way. Next, let's keep it in the back of your mind which channel names correspond to specific channel numbers. In forward programming for the smart receivers, we assign channels based on their channel names like AUX1, AUX2, etc. In the Avian ESCs, we're assigning thrust reversing based on the channel numbers. So channel five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. A quick reference of the channel numbers used by the Avian ESC and their default port assignments will help to kind of clarify things here. All right, so channel five is gonna be for the gear channel. Channel six is gonna be called AUX1, or your flap channel if you're using a wing type that includes flaps. Channel seven is gonna be AUX2, channel eight will be AUX3, and channel nine will be AUX4. If you don't wanna commit all that to memory, that's fine. This video is gonna be here forever, so simply bookmark the video in your browser, and you can come back here and reference this video anytime you're wanting to set up thrust reversing. All right, now that all that's out of the way, let's look at the steps for setting up safe select and reverse thrust, not just in your Viper 90 millimeter, but any bind and fly airplane equipped with a smart compatible receiver and a smart AV and ESC. Number one, how many channels are we gonna be using for specific functions on the airframe? For the Viper 90 millimeter, the answer is gonna be six channels for all the functions on the airframe, but this may not always be the case. The F-16, for example, is only using five channels, because it doesn't have flaps. Number two, which channels are you actually using? Map it out if you need to. It's a safe bet to assume that the first four channels are always gonna be for your control surfaces in your throttle. Do you have flaps on your model? It's a good bet that those are always gonna be on channel six. And if you have retracts, it's a good bet that those are always going to be on channel five. Do you have additional things on your model like a cargo door, a bomb bay door, a gun turret, things like that that you can control with other switches or channels in your receiver, you need to keep those in mind too. Now for the Viper 90 millimeter, we're gonna be using all six of the first six channels. The point here is to always be aware of what channels you have available for auxiliary functions, which brings us into step three. For step three, we wanna look at whether or not you're gonna be running safe select, or do you have other functions assigned to available channels? This includes safe select, gain adjustments, panic buttons, Bombay doors, etc., etc. All of these functions are gonna require available channels. So you have to know what you're gonna be using in your particular model. And finally, when we're talking about thrust reversing, you wanna know which channel and what switch we're gonna to use to engage your thrust reversing in your model. If you have a Viper 90 millimeter, you're more than likely gonna be running your safe select on channel seven or aux two. So we can assign the reverse channel to channel eight or aux three, and in that case, I like to use the F switch for my reverse function. Keep in mind your limitation of only being able to use channels five through nine for reversing. So don't be afraid to reorder other functions that have greater flexibility in where they can be assigned if you need to. Now as a bit of a side note, with all this talk of auxiliary functions, 
New planes coming from eFlight are including more and more functionality with things like safe select, thrust reversing, light controllers, you name it. We're already seeing eight channels being utilized to get all of the functionality out of the box for the new eFlight Draco, and I can only assume we're going to see more of that in the future. Now hopefully you're starting to rethink that decision to pull the trigger on an NX6. This is why high channel count transmitters like the NX10 and the iX12 can be valuable assets even for foamy pilots, and I always recommend buying a transmitter with as many channels as you can afford, even if you don't think you're going to need them all. All right, all that aside, now that our plan is made, it's time to execute that plan in the transmitter. We're going to be performing all of these steps on the NX10, but this will apply to the NX series, Gen 2 DX series transmitters, and the iX series transmitters. In this particular case, we're going to be setting up an E-Flight Viper 90mm with safe select on channel 7 or aux 2 and thrust reversing on channel 8 or aux 3. Now as a baseline, I assume you've already followed the procedure in the airplane manual and set up the transmitter in accordance with the computerized transmitter setup table available in all bind and fly aircraft manuals and that the model that you set up is selected in your transmitter. Now let's jump into the NX-10 and get programming. And before we get into the steps to set up safe select and thrust reversing, we're going to go into our channel assign menu and make sure that we have switches assigned to the channels that we're going to use for safe select and thrust reversing. To get into channel assign, we're going to press the scroll wheel. We're going to scroll to system setup. We're going to click on yes. And now we're going to go down to channel assign. Click the scroll wheel again. Once we get into the channel input config menu, we're going to see that we're going to have NAs for throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and aux 1 or channel 6. That's going to be our flaps channel because we're using a wing type that has flaps. Our gear we're going to assign to channel 5 and we're going to have that on the A switch which has already been assigned. On channel 7 that's going to be our safe select mode selector switch which we want on switch B. That's how I set mine up and I want my reverse channel to be on channel 8 or aux 3 and I have that assigned to switch F. Now if you need to change these that's very easy. We just go to the channel that we want to change so in this example We'll go here to aux 3. We just click our scroll wheel and we can either scroll to the right or to the left to pick the switch that we want or we can simply exercise that switch. So right now I am moving switch F up and down. It will automatically select that and we click our scroll wheel to lock that in. On aux 4 and aux 5, channels 9 and 10, they're not going to be used. By default they are set to our sliders. I'll set those to inhibit. Well, now that we have our switches assigned to the channel, let's go to the channel monitor to make sure that everything is working as we expect it to. So we're going to back out. Now that we're back on our main screen, we can scroll to the right and this will take us to our channel monitor. Here we can make sure that everything is working as we expect. So I turn off my throttle cut. I can make sure that my throttle is working the way I expect it to. The ailerons are working. The rudder's working. I've got my gear on switch A. We'll go ahead and flip that. So that's working properly. I've got my flaps on switch D. We'll go ahead and exercise those. So our flap switch is working the way we expect it to. On aux 2 or channel 7, I've got my mode selector switch for safe select. We'll go ahead and exercise that. So that's working the way we expect it to. And lastly, on aux 3 or channel 8, I've got my thrust reverse switch. We'll make sure that that works as well. And that is working the way we expect it to. Now just a quick note here, whenever we're running thrust reversing, negative 100 as your channel value is going to be forward thrust and plus 100 will be reverse thrust. So in the event that you set up your thrust reversing, and it's not going in the right direction, the simple way to fix that is to simply go into your servo setup and reverse the channel that you have your thrust reversers set up on. All right, now that we've made sure that all of our switches are assigned properly, we'll go back to the main menu and we'll continue on with the setup process. All right, the next step in this process will be to bind the airplane using the bind button on the receiver with safe select disabled. To do that, we'll go ahead and power up the airplane by plugging in a battery and immediately press the bind button on the receiver. When the orange light starts flashing on the receiver, 
you can either power up the transmitter while holding down the I button, or we can use the method that we're going to show here, where we can bind by going into the bind mode using the menu options. Now, right now you can hear the ESC beeping in the background, and that means that our airplane is in bind mode. It's just waiting for us to bind it. To get to the bind menu, we're going to click the scroll wheel. We're going to scroll down to bind. We're going to click on that. We're going to click yes here. And then we're going to click on bind. Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Now once the bind is complete, it'll go back to our main screen and you'll see that we have our receiver signal strength as well as our smart telemetry. From here we can configure safe select using forward programming. To do that, we're going to click the scroll wheel. We're going to scroll down to forward programming. We're going to click on gyro settings and then we're going to click on safe select. All right, now that we're in the safe select menu, I can scroll down to safe select and we're going to turn safe select on. We do that by clicking the scroll wheel and that'll toggle safe select on. All right, and now we're going to go and choose a safe select channel. Now, if you remember during our planning, we decided that we're going to use aux 2 for safe select. So we're going to go ahead and click where it says inhibit. And what we can do is we can either scroll to aux 2 using the scroll wheel, or if we go back to inhibit, if you see we exercise that B switch, and just by exercising the B switch, it automatically senses that aux 2 is getting changed, and it will go ahead and select aux 2 here for us. At this point, we can go ahead and click the scroll wheel again, and it will lock in that value. Now that we have aux 2 set up as our safe select channel, we can go ahead and cycle through the three different positions of the switch, which will change the flight mode and see what's going on in each switch position with regard to the status of AS3X and SAFE for each one of those positions. So in flight mode three, we've got AS3X on and SAFE off. In the center position of the switch, which is flight mode two, I've got AS3X on and safe off, the same as position three. And when I go to the forward position or flight mode one, you'll see that we have safe turned on. And once we turn on safe, AS3X is automatically turned on. So that doesn't even show up as an option for us anymore. Now everything is good with safe select and we can move on to programming the thrust reversing. We can back out of the forward programming menus by hitting the back button on the transmitter until we go back to the main screen. All right, so now that we're back on our main screen, we can enable thrust reversing by using the scroll wheel to scroll all the way to the right. All right, once we're in the smart ESC menu, we're gonna follow these steps to get into the Avian ESC programming menu. So we're gonna to go to low throttle we're going to apply up elevator and left aileron, which that is step one. So it's a two-step process. We're going to go up elevator, left aileron. Now we have step two. We'll apply right aileron with up elevator. And that will bring us into our ESC programming menu. When we go up and down on the right stick, it's going to change the function that we're looking at or the, the one that we're applying. And you'll see it's got the little caret symbol next to the one that we can adjust at that time. So we're gonna go ahead and click down. So reversing is a brake type. We're gonna click down one. And once we have that caret next to brake type, we're gonna go right and left on the stick to change the programming for that function. So right now our brake is set to disabled and we are gonna go to the right until we get it to reverse. So now it says reverse there. So now that we've set up our thrust reversing, now we need to go through the option of setting up the channel that thrust reversing is going to respond to. So we're going to continue to go down through the different options. And here we'll see thrust reversing, the third option down. So we'll go down to thrust reversing. And we want to change that from channel 7 to channel 8. All right, and now that we've changed that, what we want to do is go to exit with save. 
We're gonna click to the right with our right stick and that will take us back to this main menu for the Smart ESC programming. All right, now that we've completed both the safe select and thrust reversing programming, it will be up to you to conduct proper bench testing and pre-flight testing at the field for both of these functions. Make sure that when the model is in safe mode, that all your control surfaces deflect in the proper direction to maintain level flight, and make sure that the switch that you set up for thrust reversing is working properly and that there's no way you could accidentally enable thrust reversing by having it set to enable with the wrong switch or in a position that you're not expecting. These pre-flight checks and bench checks are absolutely critical. That's all I have for how to properly set up thrust reversing and safe select on your new bind and fly model. Happy flying everybody. Now back to you, Ryan. Dave, thanks so much. I think owning that mistake is the right thing to do. See me in the second flight. It's way better and there was no, you know, incursions and crashes and things like that. Right, Bobby K? That's right. That's right. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Ha.